Hey guys, welcome to this video. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is experimental design. How do you design an experiment? And I'm going to be going over a couple of examples and looking at just, you know, how do we design an experiment? What are the important parts of it? By now, you've already gone over the four key principles of experimental design. Um, so we're going to put it all together. We've talked about a lot of vocabulary in terms of control, blinding, double blind, um, blocking, all of those things. Uh, we've either talked about it in class, if you're in my class, or you've uh, read about it in our textbook. Um, maybe sometime I'll make a video on all those those uh, vocabulary, but um, if you don't have that, I, I encourage you to go back and take a look at maybe someone else's video or something. Look, at, look for all the vocabulary that I'm going to be talking about. So I'm really going to focus this video just on two examples of experimental design. The first one's going to be a ri randomized block design, and the second one's just going to be a completely randomized experimental design, okay? So we're going to take a look at how do we write it, and then also uh, two ways of writing it. So uh, let's look at a, a problem here. I have it up here on, on my uh, computer here. An ice cream company wants to introduce a new flavor. They are considering two possibilities. They're either going to have mint delight or chocolate fiesta. They want to know which one customers will prefer. Design an experiment to investigate this question, and the company feels that children may have a different preference than adults. So let's take into account that as we design our experiment. We can write our experiment in two ways. We can either do it in paragraph form or using a diagram. Uh, I recommend writing it in paragraph form and using the diagram as only a, kind of a, a map of how you would do it. So. One thing I'm going to tell you guys, though, is, is for any of these things, you're really going to to uh, consider them to be, it's really about common sense, okay? Really, if I was going to do this, how do you think I would set it up? Well, I think that I might want to have some sort of um, design where my Mint Delight and my Chocolate Fiesta, you know, they're kind of the... They're kind of similar, and I want to see which one customers prefer, so I'm going to maybe do a blind test, right? I'm going to make sure that they don't know which one they're tasting, and then I'm going to ask them, which one do you like? And then I'm going to decide, okay, uh, five people liked Mint Delight, and only two people liked Chocolate Fiesta, so maybe Mint Delight is the one I want to go to. So that's kind of the idea that, we're, that we want to do, so we want to make sure that our design um, it is similar to that, but effective. All right, so we have to make sure we do a couple of things right. So let's let's go in and take a look at what this is, and and I'll draw um, our our diagram here to kind of put it together. So here's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to select. I got some pretty colors here. Let's use pink because I'm wearing pink. Um, so oh, that's because I'm on a highlighter. Huh, no wonder. All right, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have some customers so let's say I'm gonna pick um, you know for the sake of of, of this problem um, we're gonna pick let's say we're gonna pick 30 people and it really it doesn't in this example I'm just using 30 because that's you know an example but I'm gonna I'm basically gonna ask for some volunteers to, to try this out okay so let's say I'm gonna pick uh, 30 30 30 participants and this is a block design, and the reason we're blocking is because the company feels that there's a difference between the children and the adults. And so since we think that there's some sort of variability between children and adults, we're going to want to block. So we're going to block this, and we're going to separate these into uh, children and adults. Okay, and this is our block right here. All right, so we're blocking right here. Now, our blocking, let's say 30 participants, you know, I'm just I'm just throwing these numbers out. They're not in the actual problem, but I'll say, you know, 20 of these are children and, um, you know, 10 of these are adults. So I don't really know. I'm just making these numbers up just so you know. Um, but basically, the important part is that we're blocking it and we're, we're, we're putting them into children and adults. Okay, so uh, we've got our children and adults, we've got our blocking, so now the most important thing you do in any randomized, in any experiment, is that you randomly select who's going to get what. Okay, so we're going to, we want to know which ones customers prefer, so what we're going to do is we're going to randomly give them, um, okay, so we're going to randomly give them uh, what, you know what what type of you know let's do this we're gonna we're gonna put this 
group in um, in the mint. We're going to put 10 people in the mint group and 10 kids in the chocolate group. Actually, let's do this. Uh, that doesn't really make sense because then we're only going to get one of each, right? So let's do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these up into two groups. I'm going to randomly select. Okay, so I'm going to randomly select this group here, uh, group one, and this group here, group two. Okay, and again, this is random. I want to randomly place these people in this group. And I'm going to do the same thing with the adults. I'll tell you what these groups do in just a second. All right, so to get a little bit of randomization here and uh, to reduce the bias, what I'm going to do is uh, in group one, they're going to try the chocolate fiesta first, and then they'll try the mint delight. Okay, so then we'll do uh, chocolate fiesta first, and then the mint delight, and then this group will do mint delight first, and then the chocolate fiesta. That just just in case you know uh, the the way it, on their taste buds, maybe that's a bias, or the way the way they eat it. Um, that's just going to reduce, you know, kind of reduce the bias of which one they taste first. All right, and we're going to do the same thing here. Chocolate Fiesta, mint, chocolate Fiesta, mint, okay? All right, so then uh, after we do that, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask which one's better. All right, so we're going to ask which one they prefer. Same thing here. We're going to ask which one they prefer. All right, preference. And and then we're going to we're going to compare. So then we're going to compare our data and make our conclusion, okay? So that is our experimental design here. Again, we blocked it by children and adults, and we randomly selected them in a group so that we can we can uh, we can change the flavor um, just in case there was some sort of bias in which flavor they got first. I think in here we're going to go ahead and blind, blind this. So we want to make a note that we're going to blind this so that they're not going to know which flavor they're going to get, right? Okay, so we can write all of this in paragraph form. And basically what we would say is that we would gather a group of participants. We would block them into children and adults. And then when we have our children, we're going to randomly select and place these children into two different groups and I'm going to randomly place those into those groups we're going to blind them and not let them know which one they're getting first one group is going to get the chocolate fiesta first the other group is going to get the mint delight first vice versa for group two and we're going to do that for adults as well then we're going to ask them which one they prefer from that information we're going to find out which has the be better preference and that's going to be our conclusion which one gets picked is going to one that has the more preference okay so um that's how you would design the experiment again I, I i drew out here the diagram from the diagram you're going to write it in complete sentences okay so uh if you want an example of that i'll write that in in uh in the uh in the notes at the end here um and i'll just kind of i'll just kind of put it up as a as a as a blank picture and you can you can write them down okay all right, so let's take a look at the next one here. And I won't spend as much time on this one, so let's take a look. A medical researcher believes that supplements of glucosamine can help reduce the pain of arthritis. She would like to test a supplement for two different dosage levels. We're going to design an experiment to test her conjecture and be sure that we have um, identified the factors, levels, treatments, and response variables. So our response variable is going to be the pain, right? Um, or actually the, the reduction of pain because we want to see if the glucosamine supplements reduces the pain of arthritis so what we're going to do here is we're going to gather and this is this again this one's the completely randomized design all right so we're going to gather a group of participants um, the doctor is likely going to gr grab a group of participants normally they ask volunteers um, let's go and say again we have uh, 30 participants and of these 30 participants we're going to end up um, with two dosage levels but we also want to see if it can if it can help reduce. So since we're really comparing the efficacy of the the glucosamine, we're going to want a control group. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna split these into three groups, um, and we got two dosage levels. So we're gonna say this is dosage one. I, I don't know what that dosage is. Um, 
that doctor probably knows maybe it's a it's a high low I don't know and then our last one's gonna be a placebo because we're gonna give them one that doesn't have anything in it and we're gonna take these 30 participants and we're gonna randomly place them into these 10 into these groups of 10 each okay now we're going to in each of those dosages um, we're going to give them those doses, and we're going to check, check uh, over a certain time period. So um, we're going to say over the course of a month, maybe. Of 30 days. Okay, we want each of them to take it for 30 days. And then after 30 days, we will compare pain levels. And then after we compare the pain levels, we're going to make a conclusion on whether or not, um, you know, what dosage worked well or whether or not it didn't work at all. If the placebo was the same as doses one or two, then it didn't work, right? So uh, what are the factors? Well, the factor, there's really one factor, and the factor is the drug, right? The drug is my factor, is whether or not the, the supplement of glucosamine is really what we're looking at. So this is my factor. Uh, my level, well, I have three levels of that factor. I have the one dosage, the two dosages, and the placebo. The treatments, well, since I only have one factor with three levels, I have three treatments. Okay, three levels, three treatments. In fact, in this case, the levels and the treatments are the same. And my response variable, again, is going to be the pain level. So I'm going to check to see what that pain level is. Now, again, I can write this in paragraph form. I'm going to select 30 participants to take a course of drug of the supplement of glucosamine for 30 days. I'm going to randomize, randomly select those 30 participants into three groups. One group is going to get a dosage one. I don't know what that's going to be, maybe low. Dosage two is maybe a medium or high. And then a placebo group that's not going to get, that's going to get a placebo. I'm going to check to see their pain levels after 30 days. And I'm going to compare those pain levels to see which one was most effective. And then I'm going to make my conclusion on that. So all of that that I just said, you're going to run right in paragraph form. So again, I will have, uh, I will have those um, in the next, at the very end of this video. Uh, I'll end off with a picture of all, with those two explanations, okay? So that's it, guys. Those are two experimental designs. The first one was, um, was the block design, and the second was completely randomized. And it's only called completely randomized because I randomly selected them into those three groups, and I didn't have any blocking. The one thing you want to remember, though, is the most important thing is that you need to randomly place your individuals or your participants. If you do not do any randomization, you are not doing a good experiment, okay? And the reason we, want, we can do experiments, we randomly select these things, is because um, the randomization reduces bias, and if we do our experiment correctly, we can, we can make a conclusion on a cause and effect relationship, which is... Which is you know, we talked about it earlier that you, you really can't do that, except if you do a good experiment. Um, and that's why a really good design experiment, there's nothing that can replace a really good design experiment. Okay, guys? So um, randomly select, very, very, probably the most important thing. Um, I gave you two, two, two examples. Good luck. We'll talk to you soon.